Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of DeLorean Tech and today we are going to continue on our suspension improvement video series. And in this episode, we're gonna be installing uh, DeLorean Parts Northwest front sway bar combo kit, which upgrades the bushings on the anti-roll bar here to polyurethane bushings. So you got the forward polyurethane bushings right here. And then you've got the donut bushings that will also be upgraded to polyurethane and those hold the sway bar at the lower control arm. So with the polyurethane bushings here and the anti-roll bar, the shock tar brace that I installed from DMOCO and the installation of DPI's stainless steel lower control arm support links. The suspension upgrade is pretty much complete. About the only thing left to do would be to replace the stock springs and shocks with higher performance units. Okay, so here's the unboxing video. suspension components Toby has offered these for quite a long time I figured I was upgrading my suspension and might as well just upgrade everything Ooh, nice so these are all polyurethane these go in the control arms right here. Comes with all the hardware you need. And it comes with a set of assembly and installation instructions, which is cool. Front sway bar combo kit. So you could order them separately. You can order just these two together. And these separately. Or you can order them all together and save a lot of money. So you get, looks like about four pages of instructions here. Toby's instructions are always really detailed and thorough. It's one of the reasons why I went with them. And also the fact that he's been producing these for a long time with great success. So let's go ahead and install these. So before we start the installation, you're gonna to wanna to get the car up on ramps or on a lift, which supports the car on its tires rather than the frame. Then you're gonna to wanna to locate the hardware that you're gonna be replacing. So we're gonna be replacing the front sway bar bushings and brackets and also the donut bushings that are in here. So in order to accomplish this, the sway bar has to be removed from the vehicle. You should also take note of the orientation of the sway bar. I'm gonna be taking it out and refinishing it a little bit. I'm gonna sand off as much of the rust as I can and paint it, but you do need to take note that there is a possibility, however unlikely, that you might replace the sway bar in upside down, which is possible, but the braking and steering won't work properly if this sway bar is installed upside down. So definitely take note of the orientation. So the kit also comes with a series of washers and nuts. So you've got two 19 millimeter stainless steel flat washers. These are these big ones right here. You've got four of the 10 millimeter flat washers. You've got two primary nuts, which are the thicker nuts right here. And then you've got two jam nuts, with it, which are the thinner ones right there. So. so the first thing you're gonna do is remove the primary and jam nuts that are at the threaded end of the sway bar right here. So you'll remove those. It's probably not a bad idea um, to use some penetrating solvent just in case. You can also use some penetrating solvent on the bolts that are holding up the bushings 
right here in the front of the sway bar. Just in case. So you can use a breaker bar to loosen this if you want, if it gives you some trouble. Once you get it loose, you can just remove it by hand. And there it is. So for the other side, just repeat the same process. As you just do each one at a time. Next you're going to want to remove the bushy bracket here at the front of the sway bar. There's two 17 millimeter bolts that you're going to have to loosen up versus 19 millimeter at the control arms. Okay, so that didn't look like it was nice and <laughs> secure there. It should really be um, hanging like that, so that just tells you something right there. So just go ahead and repeat the process for the other side. You'll be using these bolts later on when you reattach it. There we go. So the sway bar is completely loose. And next is removing it. Behind the bushings, you'll notice that we have the spacer plates in there as well. You're going to need to replace these. So take care not to lose these. So I would keep them with the bolts, keep those all together. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you wanna, in order to remove the sway bar, you're gonna have to pull it straight out this way. Just be careful not to damage the threaded ends. So use both hands and pull it forward. Pulls out like that. So when you pull this out, the outer or the aft donut bushing will just fall off along with the, the washer if you left that large washer in place. And the forward bushing um, will stay on. You just take these off. So these are the flat washers that were originally installed. So there, you'll notice that the forward washers have a larger diameter. This is so that they'll fit over the, the bulge that forms right here. The washers that come with Toby's kit are actually meant for the forward bushings. 
So you have to slide these all the way over to here. And they'll stop at this bulge that's formed in the bar. So that's where those go. So you'll need to retain the original washers here. So the one with the larger diameter on the inside goes there and the smaller diameter will go here and then you'll have your, your two donut bushings in between. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna try to get this bar cleaned up as much as I can. All the washers and all the bolts cleaned up, uh, the spacer plates as well and then come back and, and put everything together with the new bushings and the new brackets. This is also a good opportunity to inspect the inside here of the lower control arm, just to make sure there's no corrosion or any cracking going on there. So these look pretty okay. But yeah, you're gonna wanna look on both sides. So here's behind. And everything's looking okay. I don't see any corrosion or anything. They actually look really good. Thinking about keeping these control arms. You're also going to want to clean out the inside here as well. There's a lot of built up debris and dirt. I mean, that's yeah, pretty dirty in there. Okay, so here's some comparisons of the bushings themselves. So here's the old sway bar bracket bushings. These are uh, rubber bushings, are very soft. Uh, this is the new polyurethane bushing. This thing is really solid. So here's the new donut bushing, and here's the old one. You can see the difference in the size. This one's worn down quite a bit. It's got a lot of cracking going on in there. Here's the new donut bushing compared to the old original one. Okay, so I went ahead and sanded down the sway bar as much as I could. There's still a little bit of that black undercoating that they sprayed on at the docks in Belfast, but uh, there's no corrosion. That's the most important part. Just gotta make sure all the corrosion is taken off and there was quite a bit on this. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna soak the ends in some CLR to get rid of whatever corrosion is inside the th threads right here. And I'll let that soak for a while and then we'll prime and paint it. Okay, I've got the swear bar end soaking in CLR right now to get rid of the rust. Okay, so when you're cleaning out the inside of the control arms where the donut bushings go, you want to make sure it is very clean in there. And there's no rust, no debris. There's a lot of crap in there, so I went to town on that and cleaned it up really good. You should also look inside to make sure there's no cracking or any corrosion. So just make sure it's extremely clean on both sides. Okay, so I went ahead and painted the sway bar. I used the anti-rust paint and it came out really nice looking. I mean, this thing looks almost brand new. So, sanding off all the rust and the old undercoating. Um, you don't want to paint this section right here, the shouldered section, this is where the new donut bushings uh, will be making contact with the bar so you want to make sure that's bare metal and you also don't want to paint over the threads you just want to make the threads as clean as you can so when you uh, put this back in and install the, the new donut bushings you're going to want to put some anti-seize on this per Toby's instructions so the bracket bushings that are installed on the front part of the sway bar right here 
what you're going to do is you're going to slide this washer through the threaded end and you're going to bring it up to here and then you're going to install the bracket bushings on here and again per the instructions they're recommending to apply some Loctite to the threads here and you're also going to want to apply Loctite to the threaded ends on the sway bar as well when you install those. So as far as the the four bolts that you're going to use to secure the brackets to the to the frame you're going to use the new 10 millimeter flat washers that are supplied with the kit. So this is a quick word uh, regarding the bolt spacers that may be equipped on your car. So the bolt spacers were part of the recall kit and are part number 11205. Those did not come on the car from the factory. They were added on as part of this recall kit. So you may or may not have these on the car. Originally, the car only came with the, the lock or spring washers and the bolts and that was it but when they did this recall kit they added in that spacer plate that clamp spacer as well as the bolt spacer okay so for this kit it is recommended if you have these to continue using them uh, I asked Toby about this and he recommended that they continue to be used so how you would do it is you wouldn't necessarily need these old spring washers anymore because if you're going to be using the Loctite you'll be fine there but you can use the flat washers that Toby included you would put those on first and then you would put these thicker washers they're actually bolt spacers and then you would put those on and then install the bolts that way when you install the bracket bushings, you're gonna to want to apply a light coating of silicone grease right here and also on the inside cavity. So Toby does include some silicone grease. So this should be enough to coat right here and also the inside of the bushing. So I went ahead and coated just this area of the threads with the thread locker. The reason why is because you're going to install the thin nut first, torque that down, and the instructions from the old service bulletin that talks about replacing the sway bar brackets also suggests to apply the thread locker to this area here, torque the thin nut first, and then apply thread locker the remainder of the threads, and then torque down the thicker nut. Okay, so here's an example of how everything's gonna be installed, and it's probably a good idea to just kinda simulate the installation before you actually do it. So you're gonna end up reusing these two washers. So this washer right here with a larger opening will go in first. Next, these donut bushings will be installed the lower control arms and they'll be installed this way. So on the front of the lower control arm, you'll insert the donut bushing this way. So the flat side is visible. On the back of the control arm, you're gonna ins insert the donut bushing this way. So the flat side is visible from the back. And those will be seated right here. Okay. You're also going to want to apply some of the uh, silicone grease just to make sure that uh, it's a little easier to insert these in the control arms. It is going to be a much uh, snug, much more snug fit than the original ones that came out. And Toby kind of explains that in his instructions here. Um, you may even need to use a rubber mallet to tap the bushings into the cavities. So before you install the new nuts that Toby supplies, you're gonna to want to install the washer with the smaller opening first. Then you're gonna to want to install the thin nut 
first, which uh, Toby's referring to that as the European method in his instructions. So installing and torquing down the thin nut first is considered the European method. Um, installing and torquing down the th thick nut first, followed by the thin nut, which uh, Toby's referring to as a jam nut, is considered the American method. So we're gonna go ahead and install the donut bushings first just to get that out of the way. So I'm gonna apply some of the silicone grease and insert them this way. So I've got my silicone grease applied to the outside surface. So when you install the bushing, you wanna make sure that there's no dirt or debris getting on the silicone grease. You also have to make sure that the inside of the control arm is clean and there's no debris in there. And let's go ahead and install it like that. Be careful and make sure it does not pop out. Looks like it's going to go in pretty easily. And there you go. So, didn't need to use the mallet. Going to go ahead and do the other side now. And here we are behind the control arms. Go ahead and install this one. Hopefully, this will be just as easy. And that is in, and make sure. There we go. So, I came back around here and I pushed both of the bushings in even further. What I did was I just used the end of the mallet to go ahead and just push in so that they go as far as you can. You can kind of see. Based on underneath the control arm, they should be right up against here. So you can basically push from the center, and push them in so that they seat at the very end here in this cavity. So before you put the sway bar back on, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the sway bar in the right orientation and you don't have it upside down. So if you remember when we pulled the sway bar and we rested it on the ground, the ends were upright. If you were to flip this bar upside down, it would look more like that with the ends touching the ground. That would be upside down. So we're gonna install it in this position. And the washers that you're gonna be needing first before you put it on are the two new washers that Toby included with the kit as well as those larger diameter washers. So we'll go ahead and install these first. So you just loop them around here. These are for the bracket bushings. So loop those around first. washers on the shoulder end where you have the step right there there you go. so you're gonna want to support the sway bar so that it's easier to fit in you may also have to uh, push the ends inward in order to get them to fit into the bushings right there. Before you do that, you have to apply some anti-seize to this section right here. We'll go ahead and do that. So we've applied the anti-seize to the bar where the bushings will contact 
another thing you have to do as well is make sure that you have good alignment in there. Um, if you notice that the holes aren't lining up, you can sort of manipulate the bushings a little bit and move them around so that they do line up. This looks like it may or may not line up completely so I can go on the other side or on this side and try to press the bushing in from a different angle to get those to line up. So what we'll do is we'll get the driver's side in there first. You gotta lift up the sway bar a little bit and align it. Careful with those threads. You don't want to damage those threads. That's why I've got some of that blue tape on the end there to make sure I don't damage those. So, looks like it's going in okay. Wow, went in pretty good. So again, you're going to need something to support the sway bar. I'm going to go on the other side and get that one in. So over here on the passenger side, you can kind of see where we're at here. We're going to have to push the sway bar in towards the center of the vehicle a little bit. It's very flexible, so it shouldn't be too hard to do. Once again, I have the sway bar supported. So I'm going to go ahead and get the sway bar, push it in a little bit. Good. All right, I think we got it. So we'll go around the other side and, and check. Okay, so we made it all the way through. All we gotta do now is just remove the blue tape. Again, that's optional. I just did not want to risk damaging the threads. Okay, so I've got the smaller nut on there. I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten that up a little bit by hand. Go ahead and do that on the passenger side as well. So once you get both of the threaded ends completely through the aft donut bushing, and what I mean by completely through is that none of the threads are actually touching the inside metal sleeve of the aft donut bushing. So you want to make sure that that smooth part that you applied the anti-seize to is all the way through both bushings okay so that can be kind of challenging um, what I had to do to get it to fit properly is kind of go back and forth a little bit I had to back out one side a little bit and eventually got it to fit you just have to kind of work at it I think the key is supporting the bar as much as you can so that you have proper alignment um, when you get one end in and situated correctly, what kind of ended up happening for me is that it pushed the other end on the other side of the car out a little bit, so it was a lot harder to align. So I had to back out the one that I got situated a little bit and try to push in the other side. So I did that for a few iterations. I finally got it. You just have to be very careful not to damage the threads right here on the ends. So I've got the smaller... Um, nut in there right now and like I mentioned before there's two ways of doing this there's the American method and the European method uh, the difference being in uh, which nut goes on first the thicker nut or the thinner nut so I've uh, reached out to a couple guys and I've decided to go with the American method so that would be the thicker nut going on first followed up by the smaller nut or the jam nut and the reason why I'm going to do that is because uh, it's really preference, but the reason why I'm going to do it is because I'd rather have the larger nut holding in the bushing versus the smaller nut. Um, either way, we're going to apply some thread locker on here, uh, torque it to the specifications that are in the instructions, and then we'll move on to the front bushings. So I'm removing the small nut right now. And I tightened it up just enough to where I'd be able to know where to put the thread locker. And when you're applying a thread locker, just a little dab on top will suffice. And when we put the thread locker on for 
the primary nut, we'll just go ahead and put it where we believe the primary nut is going to sit, which is like right up against this washer right here. Okay, so I've got my Loctite. I'm just going to put a small dab of it on top here. A little bit on top right there. That's all you need. So we'll go ahead and fasten the primary nut first. So when you screw that in, it will spread the thread locker around the threaded end here. So once you've got that kind of hand tightened, go ahead and tighten that. All right, now we're going to torque it to 55 foot-pounds per Toby's instructions. I've got my torque wrench here. And we're going to go ahead and have my torque wrench set at 55 foot-pounds. You're going to need to use a deep socket, 19 millimeter for this one. That's it. 55 foot pounds. Next, we're going to install the jam nut, which is the smaller one. Again, you're going to want to apply a little dab of rock tight thread locker on there. Just a little bit on the top. Should we get enough? Well, this stuff has to cure. It says 24 hours. I would give it a couple days at least before you take the car out driving. Because you do want to make sure that this has cured fully. And when you do this, you want to make sure that you don't inadvertently uh, retorque the larger nut as well. So it might be better to use a smaller socket. So let's go ahead and just try a, a normal sized socket as opposed to a deep socket. Yeah, I think that'll work. So this one gets torqued to 40. That's it. All right, so I've got both nuts on and we're good to go. So regarding the torque values, I did wanna uh, comment that the shop manual torque values for the primary and jam nuts are actually 68 foot-pounds and 44 foot-pounds respectively. The reason why they're lower here in the instructions so in other words, 55 for the primary and 40 for the, the jam nut is because you have to consider the Loctite being applied to the threads as well, which does add lubrication and does change the torque spec. So without the Loctite, the torque necessary to secure the nuts is going to be higher. So here we are on the passenger side, torquing to 55 foot-pounds. I'm torquing the primary nut right now. So, if we want to over-torque these, that's it, 55 right there. And I'm gonna put some Loctite on there, the thread locker, just a little bit. So, go ahead and turn that on. Ok, 
Okay, now we're gonna torque the jam nut to 40. Gotta be careful again not to catch the primary nut. Looks like we're good. That's it. 40 foot pounds. Okay, the next thing we need to do is install the forward sway bar bushings, which are these. You've got the two brackets, the bushings, you got your four bolts with your new flat washers on there and your spacer plates. We're also gonna be applying some of the silicone grease to the bushings and thread locker to the bolts here. And that is per the service bulletin that talks about um, using a Loctite for 242 and torquing it to 26 foot pounds, which is the same as Toby's instructions as well. So that's what we're gonna do. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that this area right here is very clean. This is where we're gonna be installing the bushings. So this area has to be clean. We're also gonna be applying some of that silicone grease right here. So make sure that's clean on both sides. So just apply a little bit of that silicone grease right on here. Make sure you have full coverage. You don't have to put a whole lot on there. Just make sure that you've got it completely covered. And then do the other side. You're also gonna to wanna to apply some of the silicone grease to the inside of the bushings as well. Do both of them. So in order to install these bushings, you're gonna have to uh, open up. There's a slit right here that you have to open up using a flat-headed screwdriver or something similar. You would open that up. Just be careful not to damage it. And when you position this over the bar, you want that slit facing towards the front of the vehicle. So we'll be positioning the bushing like this with the flat side facing up. So let's go ahead and put that on. You gotta be very careful not to damage. Really you're just trying to get it open so that you can slide it in. There you go. So it's on there, you're going to push that up against the washer right here and then repeat the same thing for the other side. The next thing you're going to want to do is attach the new brackets to the bushings and you just have to make sure that when you do that they fit in between these little ridges just like that. Don't forget to install the spacer plate as well. You also have to make sure that you're not going to have any interference between the brackets and the radiator support as well. So, so you're going to want to apply some Loctite. You don't really need that much. Just apply it to the top. So with the sway bar supported here, go ahead and insert your bolts. Be careful not to cross thread into the welded nut that's in place in there. So this spacer plate, you want to make sure that doesn't move around too much.
And in order to avoid cross threading into the welded nut that's up in here, you want to make sure that these bolts turn easily, especially by hand. And then you can start screwing them in. So if they move easily using a socket just by hand here, then you're probably okay. If you feel like you have to force them in, then there's a probably going to be an issue there. So go ahead and tighten those up and then we'll torque it to 26 foot-pounds. So if your car was equipped with the large washers, AKA the bolt spacers, you're gonna to wanna to put those on right after the flat washers that are included in the kit. Again, your car may not come with these, but if they do, the recommendation is to continue to use them. They should fit fine in here. There should be enough clearance to um, allow them to fit in right here next to the bushing, between the bushing and the radiator support arm. Again, you don't want to force this bolt in. You do want to tighten it up and then torque it to the required 26 foot-pounds. Okay, so we have our torque wrench sent to 26. That's it right there. So here's the completed installation with the bolt spacers on. Again, if your car did come with these, it is recommended to continue to use them. They do install right after the flat washers that are included with the kit, in between those and the bushing mount. Okay, so the installation is complete. Everything is torqued up to specification. Don't be tempted to go out for a test drive immediately. The Loctite thread locker has to cure for a minimum 24 hours, so I'll probably take it out tomorrow or the next day. Uh, if you had any questions, just go ahead and drop those in the comments. Let me know what you think about the video. And thanks for watching.